A very warm welcome to you to this joint webinar that is hosted courtesy of ABSA Kenya and the Nairobi Securities Exchange. If you're joining us from Nairobi, it's a warm good afternoon. If you are joining us from across the continent, well, I hope your morning has started off well. Today's webinar is all about understanding the key trends that are happening globally, especially in one particular investment class known as gold. Our webinar is titled Investing in Gold, Hedging Against a Market Fall with a Gold Investment. We have a lot of speakers lined up for you, but before I get into what we are going to be discussing today, allow me to be able to um, introduce myself. My name is Mbitha Mwema. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Infallible Group. I'm all about financial empowerment from the continent of Africa to the continent of Africa. I will be your moderator for the day. We have a lot that we are discussing. The title of our webinar, Investing in Gold, Hedging Against a Market Fall with a Gold Investment. We have a lot lined up for you. I will give you a brief rundown in terms of what to expect. Then thereafter, I'll take you through the house, um, housekeeping rules for the day in terms of what to expect, how you can be able to engage with us. And then I'll kick us off with the, intro, the panelist for the day. In terms of the running order, we will start with Mr. Anthony Kirui, who is the Director of Markets at APSA. Anthony will set the stage for this conversation. Why gold? Why now? Why do gold through the APSA product? After Anthony sets the stage, we will be joined by Byron Woods. Byron is a head of commodities at APSA. He sits out of South Africa and he has been looking at commodities for a very long time up until now. Byron will give us the keynote speech for the day. We expect that to take 10 minutes and then we will follow that with a brief question and answer session. Once we are done with that, we get to the sweet spot in terms of this conversation for today. We have a panel discussion. We have three key panelists who are sitting with us today. First and foremost, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. The other panelist, Michael Mugwaba, he is the head of the New Gold ETF and domicile out of Johannesburg. Another local investor, we will be joined by Nahasha from the Standard Investment Bank. I will be giving you more detail about who our panelists are as we go along. Once we finish this panel discussion, which we hope to run for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes on the higher side, we will invite you to engage with us on a question and answer session to tell us what your thoughts are. Does this particular product make sense for you? What more would you like to do and to be able to know about this? After that, we will have five minutes from one of our participants, that is Tito. Tito Namo will be speaking to us. He is a senior trader at ABSA Securities Limited, telling us how can you participate in this opportunity that we are discussing today. Thereafter, we will wrap the session. We hope to take one and a half hours at most. We will hope to do it in a much less um, point of time, depending on the question and answers and the engagements from the panelists. Let's get into the housekeeping rules. Just a few rules for us. If you have just joined, you can see at the bottom of your screen, there is a question and answer segment. If you want to ask us anything, I suggest that you put your questions there. If you are watching us online, we are streaming live on the Facebook page for Absur, as well as the Facebook page for the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Please feel free to put up your questions as well on this uh, platforms. We will take them up. We will present them to the panelists as well as the guest speaker of the day. We will endeavor to answer all your questions. Remember, we have two question and answer segments. Keynote speak, after, after the keynote speaker speaks, then we will go into a brief question and answer uh, segment. I'll take one, two, perhaps three questions. Then we'll get into the panel discussion. We will have a longer conversation at that point in time in terms of answering your questions. And then we will close the session. Welcome once again. And the key thing we are discussing today is in investing in gold. How do you hedge against a market fall with gold as an investment for you? setting us up and um, creating the stage for this conversation, allow me to welcome Mr. Anthony Kirui. Anthony is the Director of Markets at APSA Kenya. Welcome to the floor, Anthony. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today, everybody. 
My name uh, is Anthony Kiroi, Director and Head of Global Markets at APSA Bank Kenya. Let us start by acknowledging a team of experts led by Jeffrey Otundo, the Nairobi Securities Exchange Chief Executive, Michael Magwaba, the Head of Exchange Traded Products Business at APSA Group, and Nashon Mungai, the Executive Director of Global Markets at SIB. Without forgetting our very able moderator, Bidhi Mwema, herself an investment banker by training and a business journalist by profession. It is a great honor to have all of you joining us at this session this afternoon. And it is our sincere hope that you are keeping safe and observing all the preventative guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health, as well as the World Health Organization against COVID-19. In this session, uh, in this season rather, of COVID-19, we are facing one of the most difficult challenges of our lifetime, one which governments, businesses and societies around the world could never have fully prepared for or anticipated and whose full impact is yet to, be, yet to be fully understood. However, as we grapple with the disruptive impact of this pandemic on our economy, our health and education systems, we're beginning to see some positive impact. This crisis has challenged us. It has shown our humanity in the way we respond and demonstrate our, demonstrated our agility by adapting our ways of working and the ways we serve our customers. At APSA, we have taken a proactive approach to stand with our customers and Kenyans during these difficult times to help them to cope with the effects of the prevailing pandemic. Aside from being the first financial institution to introduce a much needed loan relief program to cushion our customers from the financial challenges occasioned by the pandemic, we've also played a key role in supporting the government's efforts towards the fight against the virus through various interventions, including our donations to the COVID-19 fund, as well as setting, setting aside uh, donations of personal protective equipment like face masks to leading national and count, county hospitals and to fund vulnerable groups like border border operators and newspaper vendors. We also continue to support our customers through appropriate financing options during these challenging times, in addition to playing a key role in advising our customers and the investing public on the most suitable investments decisions at a time like this. And therefore, turning to today's discussion, the idea to put together the session came about from the growing investor appetite and the interest for alternative investment classes. As, a tradi as traditional asset classes continue to be severely buffeted by the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're very excited that Jeff and his team at the NSC have agreed to collaborate with us in this important session which we believe will go a long way in demystifying one of our most stable investment options at the NSC, the APSA New Gold ETF. As by a way of background, on 29th March 2017, APSA Bank, then Barclays Bank, launched and listed the New Gold ETF of the Nairobi Securities Exchange through, the APSA, through APSA Securities Limited as the first and only product in Kenya and East Africa through which institutional and retail investors can securely invest directly in gold bullion with the added benefit of minimal administrative fees. Kenya became the seventh market within the APSA group to launch this exciting proposition, which, valued, which is currently valued at approximately $1.4 billion and is the largest gold ETF in Africa and the eighth largest in the world. The new gold ETF was first launched in South Africa in 2004 as the third gold ETF in the world. The first gold ETF was launched in the US in 2003. Compared to traditional methods of purchasing and selling actual gold, ETFs offer a cost-effective way to get exposure to this precious metal. It is encouraging to now see growing demand for the asset in the last few months and today's session is therefore really timely especially given the circumstances we all find ourselves in i want to stop there and hand over to the subject matter experts to dive into this subject and i wish you all an insightful session thank you 
Thank you very much, Anthony, for setting the stage for this. I hear some keywords coming from you talking to us. You're talking about opportunities disguised as challenges, but then you're also telling us that as APSA, this is also another first in terms of you interacting with the financial community here in Kenya to be able to support and provide new investment opportunities for the market. As we get into the conversation with the subject matters, I mean, rather the subject experts, we'll start off with the key guest speaker, and this is Byron. Allow me to give you an overview of who Byron is. Byron Woods is the head of commodity trading at the APSA Group. Byron sits out of the South African office of the APSA Group. Byron has an expansive career within commodities, having worked for leading international banks in London, Switzerland, and South Africa. He has managed the APSA trading desk for 19 years, where he oversaw the primary listing of the new gold ETF, in other words, the exchange traded fund on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange back in 2004. Subsequent to this, Byron was also involved in listing the platinum and palladium um, exchange traded funds, taking the platinum fund to the largest and in the world and secondary listed across multiple African countries, seven countries, so to speak. APSA, which is one of the largest buyers of physical precious metals within the South Africa market, manages over 32 billion rand in precious metals as part of its investment portfolio. Byron has had a lot of contribution in as far as growing this asset class during his help. He will be giving us the keynote speech and giving us an overview of what he's seeing when he sits on the commodities desk, as well as what the current trends are. Welcome, Byron, and we look out for your conversation. But before I invite Byron on, remember, question and answer. I will be able to take a few questions for about two minutes after Byron speaks. Remember to put up your questions on the question and answer segment. We will take this up after. Most welcome, Byron Woods. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon, Kenya. Um, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, I'd just like to give you an overview of the gold market, specifically in respect to investment and drivers of price. But remember, there are many factors that can influence the gold price. So I'm just going to focus on the most important drivers and the current market space, the current exciting market space that we see at the moment. It should take me around 10 minutes of your time to cover. So historically, if we look back at gold 30 to 40 years ago, it used to be fundamentals that drove the gold price. I mean, physical mining and physical demand from consumers. But because gold is mined in many countries around the world, it's generally been diversified from a supply risk event point of view. So back then we had to look at the financial health of the main consumers of the time, like India, like Italy and Turkey. And to give you an example, if India had poor monsoons or rains, and their crops were low, they would spend less buying physical gold and jewelry. And that would obviously depress the gold price. Back then, the gold market was much quieter, with less volatility and with far less players. But now, today, in the 21st century, the main driver of the gold price is investment. Gold has always been relevant, but there's been an evolution in how investors interact with the metal and gain access to it. With the introduction of ETFs, um, as before mentioned, including New Gold back in 2004, and other investment products in the last 20 years. So we have to ask the question, why do investors add gold to their portfolios? Well, now, based on the events of last week, it's a great time to be asking this question as we've seen gold prices hit all-time highs, where gold ETFs have increased their holdings by over 31% so far this year, that's equivalent to 580 million US dollars. As the gold spot price has also increased by over 34% this year, this is now one of the best performing asset classes through 2020. In fact, global holdings increased for 29 straight days up until the end of last week, when we saw some positive news come out of the US and we saw a retracement back over gold over the last couple of days. 
So we then have to ask the question, why are investors driving the market higher through 2020? And what benefit does it have to add the investment to their basket? Well, firstly, importantly, gold is perceived to be a safe haven. So when currencies or equities are collapsing, gold is a risk off trade. So it tends to rally when other asset classes are losing their intrinsic value. As, invest as investors liquidate assets to cash, they tend to turn to safe havens like gold or the US dollar. Both of these are liquid, transparent assets. This is very apt this year as we've seen economies collapse, as the coronavirus has rampaged across the world, impacting negatively many countries, closing businesses, making millions unemployed, and forcing central banks to cut rates and provide financial stimulus. And this leads me on to another factor influencing gold's value, interest rates. Gold doesn't earn interest, it doesn't grow. One bar will only ever equal what the same one physical bar. So when central banks decrease their real rates to support growth, and gold becomes more attractive. Low interest reduce the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding bullion. Or another simpler way of looking at this is currencies don't have the interest advantage over gold. So this year, trying to support their economies as COVID has hit, we've seen central banks aggressively cutting rates and providing economic stimulus to protect, protect against slowing growth and these low rates could be around for many years remember investors search for yield these low rates can also influence a weaker currency the u.s fed has already said they could see increased fiscal spending ahead extremely accommodative monetary policy in place for years and a challenging economic recovery so providing extra cash into economies can have a, both a positive and a negative impact to the gold price. It gives more people more money to spend and stabilize economies. That's a risk on scenario where, for example, people have the money to invest in more riskier assets such as equities. And this would be negative to the gold price. But alternatively, it could also be supported to gold because gold is perceived to be a hedge against inflation. And then we have to look at how gold is valued in US dollars. Gold is valued in US dollars in the global marketplace. Whether or not you're buying in Singapore, Hong Kong, London, or the US, gold is commonly valued in dollars. It's the default currency of pricing. So what this means is that if the dollar is weakening against other currencies, it's cheaper for someone holding pounds, or euros as an example, to buy. So it's supportive of the gold price. The opposite, if the dollar appreciates, gold therefore becomes more expensive for consumers outside of the US. So this is negative for the gold price. Where we stand today with the dollar weakening throughout the year, as the Fed has plowed stimulus into its economy, this is being supportive to the gold price as the dollar has weakened. What we've also seen this year are multiple event risks or uncertainties to market norms, elevating gold's safe haven appeal. And as an example, we have the ongoing US-China trade disputes, creating instability and questions in the global trade market. Whether these are questions around intellectual capital, trade practices, or even currency manipulation. We've all seen recently the response to the national security laws enforced by China onto Hong Kong, where the US is now trying to use its diplomatic influence on other countries to try and isolate China. We have the ongoing Brexit trade negotiations with deadlines in December of this year. And obviously, profoundly, the spread of COVID-19 that has decimated economies as it spreads without concern. As the impact and depth of its reach continues, 
and we try and understand the virus and for how long it will impact our lives, we will continue to see low or negative real rates. There will be economic stimulus for years to come. Economies will contract. Businesses will continue to be impacted or closed. People will continue to lose their jobs. There will be an impact to how we work today and also for years to come. The virus has already led to severe macroeconomic slowdown where growth forecasts have been reduced significantly. These are all supportive to gold's investment case. Where there is uncertainty and risk, gold does shine more brightly. When we talk about investors, we also have to talk about not just your pension funds, we can talk about central banks and how they protect their country's economies. We've seen a shift to central bank buying of gold in recent years, diversification away from the US dollar. Here we can talk about Turkey, Russia, and China, some of these countries that maybe don't have the best relationships with the United States. And as we live in the 21st century, where information rules and technology can change how we do things overnight, we have to look at how the market can react within seconds to a tweet. A Trump tweet as an example, where last, last week Trump offered an idea to postpone the US elections. All of these factors create instability or questioning that leads to volatility and a shift in how market views intrinsic value. This year, we have seen these views shift ex exponentially, where gold has seen both fundamental support and also risk off support. So we then have to ask where to from here? Well, none of us here can predict the future and no one fully understands how the coronavirus journey will play out this year and for all subsequent years. And currently, this is the absolute fundamental driver more so to established markets presently. So questions remain like, how many new viral cases will there be daily going forward? How many waves will there be? Which countries will be impacted more? How many resurgences will there be? How long before an effective vaccine is approved? How long will it take for a medically approved vaccine to be manufactured and rolled out to everyone? What will be the impact to businesses, economies, and for how many years? How many jobs will be lost? How will the financial support be paid for? Also questions like, who will win the US election in November if it takes place in November? These questions will remain out there. So as long as we have questions without answers, then gold will continue to be well supported as it has been since COVID surrounded our lives earlier this year. People can ask, is gold a crowded trade? All I can say is it's more healthy and more liquid with more participants today than it was 30 years ago. Can we see volatility as investors now control the market? Well, yes, we can. But for all the intraday fast money invested in gold, there was far much more longer term real money, wealth management. Funds who care little about short term volatility but simply look to an asset class that protects in times of market stress, moving contra to their main book to protect wealth. We've seen significant investment in ABSA's new gold, gold ETF, adding to portfolios to protect against and hedge vulnerability during these times. In fact, our new gold, gold ETF now sits with assets over 26 billion rands. Since COVID really hit the market and impacted our world in March of this year, our new gold, gold ETF assets have increased by 78%. And to give you some perspective, that's increasing the assets under management from 14.5 billion up to 26 billion. So to summarize, this year is seeing the perfect storm for all the reasons to hold gold as an investment case. Its current price defines this argument. 
Gold to lure as a store of wealth is strengthening as investors face the prospect for long global recovery. The psychological level of 2000 was taken out very easily last week. It's now a blue sky scenario. Where any correction lower, we expect support to be found on dips. The fundamentals remain the same. Gold remains a high quality liquid asset that performs especially well during these times of systemic crisis, helping investors preserve capital. Gold also remains a great diversifier of portfolios evidenced this year and enhances the risk adjusted returns of a portfolio. That's it. Um, thank you. Back over to you and Bife. Thank you very much, Byron, for that extensive overview. I'm very excited when I hear numbers such as 78% growth in terms of the demand that has actually come through the new ETF from where you see it. I'm also excited because of the overview that you have given. And in short, what Byron is telling us is there is a lot happening globally. We are yet to get a cure for COVID. A lot of uncertainty remains with us. Expect a fiscal stimulus to be the way of life, at least for the developed world. So this will actually end up pushing up demand for gold as a safe haven. I think in these times of uncertainty, somebody who definitely wants high quality assets, liquid assets. And I think the key game here is you are looking to preserve your yield, if not to be able to get a higher yield in your investment class. We are continuing to take questions. Remember there is the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. Please put up any questions that you would like us to answer. I'll be able to take one to two questions before we have to let Byron go for now, and then we can get into the panel conversation. Byron, I have one key question here. There's somebody who's asking and uh, stating, with due respect, should this webinar not have been held three months ago? Maybe the horse has already bolted. Byron, has this horse called the gold? Has it already bolted? Or what are your sentiments in as far as the upside of the price is concerned? You know, with hindsight, anybody would like to step backwards in time and see where the market was trading three months ago and where the market will move to within three months. I would love to be sat back knowing that the gold would have rallied to prices almost hitting 2,100. But nobody knows the main impact. I think if you look back to what I was saying earlier, the main impact of the gold price this year has been the instability that COVID has brought into our world. Now, we initially, when countries went into lockdown in March of this year, people initially went into lockdown in many countries for three, four weeks. Here we are now, five, six months later. Nobody knew the journey that, that hasn't held. Nobody knew. People still have many, many questions in regards to how this virus spreads, um, why it's impacting more countries rather than other countries. There are still far too many questions out there. And because countries still remain in lockdown, working out how they're going to bring their economies back onto line, um, are there going to be resurgencies in the virus? Um, we don't know how long this journey is going to prevail. Um, Trump has come out and said that a vaccine will be available before elections in November. But it's been contradicted by research out there saying this is not the case and it's possibly going to be beginning of next year or at some stage next year. So I think that we live in a place whereby there are far too, more, far too many questions without answers. Um, you have to protect your wealth. Now, if you look at the large bullion banks out there, have they been increasing their forecasts um, significantly over the last couple of months for next year? Yes, they have. Why? Because there's uncertainty in the markets. So, yes, there has been lots of money thrown into gold over the last three, four months. But again, who knows if, X, if we're going to continue in a risk off scenario whereby equities will be troubled as economies and businesses struggle and close? How much investment will be turned to safer assets like gold? How long will this journey take place? And the reality is, it could be another six months, it could be another year. You have to look at facts like. Lufthansa as an airline, or Rolls-Royce as a supplier of jet airline engines, where they say that their business will only recover in four to five years' time. So the impact of COVID is not going to disappear overnight. It's not going to be resolved by tomorrow or next month. So we're still going to have instability and volatility in the market. 
So it adds all the value to continue to ensure that you add some sort of transparent, liquid, safe haven asset within your portfolio to protect against downturns. Okay. All right. Thank you, Byron, for that. I think before we let you go, just one other question. I like that you're saying that it could be six months, it could be 12 months. It's really all dependent on the uncertainty that we are seeing on a global stage. We have one of our participants saying that the global stocks are already recovering and they have seen a, um, a downward price trend on the price of gold today. What is your outlook on this? Is this a one-off um, price correction? Do you have a sense of how long this um, this price rally could go? And perhaps, uh, do you even have an indication of price? And I ask this in line with the fact that you have been trading commodities. You have been doing this for 19 years. What we are seeing today on gold, what we are seeing globally in terms of the pandemic, is this something that looks extremely different compared to what you have seen in the last 19 years so that we should actually be thinking differently and acting differently at this point in time? If you can comment on that, we will really appreciate your time. And then for our guests, we will continue to take your question and answers. I have seen a couple of questions in as far as how do we trade gold? We be bear with us. We will have extensive conversations on this same and we'll be able to answer this. Byron, over to you. Absolutely. Um, COVID-19 hasn't happened before. We haven't seen a, fi a virus of this magnitude in the world ever before or within our lifetimes. So yes, I can't point back to a time five, 10, 15 years ago where we had events like this. This is new, not just to me, it's new to all of us. So we have to look at, and because there, again, I keep saying, because there are so many uncertainties out there, and when there are uncertainties that even come from the medical field, the experts in regards to vaccine origination, vaccine uh, manufacture, um, to try and understand what we need to protect, to protect all of us out there. Um, when you have questions like that, um, we're going to have waves of correction and movement. Um, to give you an example, if you look at non-farms that came out on Friday, which was more positive, um, sure, there was an impact. We obviously initially, when economies went into lockdown, there was a significant drastic impact to businesses and employment. But then obviously, as that happens, and businesses and states slowly start to open, if we look at the US specifically, then obviously there is going to be recovery and you are going to get um, better US data from a job point of view coming out. So when data hits the market, which is better than expected, then yes, you will see a turn to a risk on scenario whereby people do start to put money back into more riskier assets such as equities. But again, the uncertainty still prevails that we don't know how long this virus is going to be around. We don't really know the impact that it is going to have to economies. We don't know going forward how many businesses, there are businesses which have shut in the last one to two months. There are still many, many businesses and companies which will close, which will liquidate in months to come. So we don't really fully understand the impact that it will have. And importantly, we don't know how long this is going to last for. And going back to my previous question, my previous statement, where you look at, as an example, a Lufthansa that say that they're only going to recover by 2024. There, there is far too many uncertainties out there. And sure, you, if you're prepared to take greater risk and you're looking at opportunities where you see a buy option, absolutely. But I think this has been a wake up call to investors everywhere in the world about protecting their wealth. And with extreme events, as we've seen this year, that there is even more reason to place your wealth in an asset class which does protect. Now, we're not saying place all of your money into gold or into new gold, into our product. We're simply saying, you know, one should look at investing, whether or not it is 2%, 5%, 10% of your wealth into something which does protect you when the market turns against you. And again, because of the uncertainties out there, I think everybody should be looking to protect their wealth. All right. Thank you very much. That is all of 19 years compressed into, into 10 minutes. Thank you very much for that overview. I think I take this out from the conversation from Byron. Byron is the head of commodities. He's looking at global markets. He's looking at different um, asset classes. He's looking at gold, palladium, platinum. And he's telling us this, that is, this is something that he has never seen before. All of us who are living in this point in time have never seen this before. But I take this out from Byron's conversation. Byron tells us that if nothing else, this is a wake up call about protecting your future investment. Are you going to be all about yield 
or are you going to be focused on all the uncertainties and miss out on the opportunities that are disguised as something else? Thank you very much, Byron. Now, if you're just joining us, welcome once again. We are getting into the panel discussion. We have three gentlemen domiciled out of Kenya and South Africa who will be talking to us about what to expect when we get into the panel conversation. We are talking about investing in gold, hedging against a market fall with investments. Allow me to give you a brief bio in as far as our panelists are concerned. First and foremost, we will be having on our panel, Mr. Michael Mugwaba. Michael is the head of exchange traded products at APSA. Michael, sorry, I, be I beg your pardon. Michael has been with the investment banking division and has been part of the team that originates exchange traded products. He is part of the team that has brought you the new gold ETF as a product which is registered in Johannesburg as well as the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Michael will be joining this call virtually but will be speaking to us from his physical office in Johannesburg. Our second panelist is Mr. Geoffrey Odindo. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Jeff has an investment um, experience in this market spanning over 20 years. He's worked with different stock brokerage communities, lastly being Kingdom Securities, before he took up the helm at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. During his tenure, he has been very successful at introducing new products into the market. We have seen the exchange traded fund come through the market during his tenure. We've also seen derivatives come through the market during Jeff's tenure. Jeff is accredited with moving the market to a space where it has become globally recognized as one of the top 10 markets to look out for when you are looking at the emerging markets segment. Last but not least, we are joined by Mr. Nahasha Nungai. He is the Executive Director for Global Markets at the Standard Investment Bank. You probably know Nahasha and have interacted with him if you are invested in Mansa X. Nahash comes into this panel to speak to us as an investor, having taken a position in the new gold ETF. Nahashan is a chartered accountant as well as a trained actuary. He has worked extensively in the banking sector, focusing on the treasury departments in different countries in the African continent. Before his current positioning, he did work a lot with KCB as well as with Equity Bank. And he brings all this knowledge and has been able to take it together, come up with a team and create the product, Monserex. Now, we will be talking to him later on as we go through the panel conversation to understand why he decided gold, why now, and why he chose to go through the route of the gold ETF. This is how we want to take the panel discussion. I will present questions to the panelists, at least one or two questions. Then we'll speak to each panelist. I will start us off with Michael, and then I'll follow on with uh, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, and then I will come to Nahashan. So we will start off with Mr. Michael Mugwaba. Michael, welcome to this webinar. As you start us off, kindly give us a brief description about New Gold and its history, and also help us understand what is an ETF and what is New Gold specifically. Very welcome to you, Mr. Michael Mugwaba. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Maybe if I can briefly talk about what is basically an ETF before I can talk about new gold. So an ETF is basically, it's a fund that is actually listed on the exchange and it's designed to give investors an exposure into asset class. It could be commodities, it could be equities, it could be anything. So an investor who's investing in that fund basically is exposed to the underlying asset. So in the case of new gold, new gold is an ETF that is obviously checking the, uh, the spot price of gold. So investors who are investing in new gold, they basically have an ownership or exposed to the spot performance price of gold. So indirectly, you actually own gold. Now, the history of new gold, I think Byron has actually explained it very briefly, nicely, but if I can go back, new gold was obviously launched in 2004 in South Africa. I mean, at the time, uh, globally, I think there were only two gold, gold ETF. New gold was a third uh, ETF to be, to be created globally and launched. So uh, since the listing, gold, obviously the first few years of, of listing, I mean, it did not do well because most investors uh, were not quite familiar on how to use the gold ETF in, as part of their portfolio. So as and when the market evolved and the 2008 financial crisis, uh, then investors start asking themselves, 
what how do we actually access gold because i mean if you obviously in terms of uncertainty you want to move into uh, in products that can act as insurance that can give you uh, some sort of a cushion so it became clear that at the time the only product in south africa that could give investors a direct exposure into gold was new gold so new gold then grow from there it became very famous a lot of investors in particular the pension fund and insurance were basically one of the, the largest users of the products so as the products became very prominent in the market and then what then happened is that we then being approached by other exchanges in the market which was the botswana and then recently uh nairobi stock exchange to say we've got investors in our market they they want to also have this benefit that your guys are actually having in South Africa. can you bring a product of this nature and then at the back of that then we don't know and, and everyone we actually work together with nsc and then we managed to bring the product into uh, in, into kenya new gold is also listed in other markets like in uh, like nigeria botswana ghana mauritius and namibia so it's basically one of the product which is basically becoming a continental product where investors actually are beginning to learn how to use it uh, much more efficiently as part of the portfolio all right. Thank you so much for that. So you have been part of this uh, uh, coming up with this product for the South African market. Now, very briefly, when you look at the Kenyan market, why would you say this is a worthwhile product for investors in the Kenyan market to have vis-a-vis -vis what is happening globally? Kindly give us your brief comments on this. Uh, so basically, um, having gold in your portfolio is obviously beneficial because it's an asset class that gives investors not only um, diversification, which is risk management, but it also gives investors a, a long-term uh, sustainable return. So most investors are of the view that uh, gold is actually, gold through gold ETF is actually not an investment that you can put into a portfolio if you are chasing the return. So I think the good thing is actually that we now we're beginning to see that uh, gold is not just only a product that gives you diversification but it also give you the return as you can see i mean it is i think the best performing asset class uh, in the market so as investors basically if you're looking at the performance of gold way back um if you take if you take 50 years we go back 50 years uh gold actually has been uh, the gold price have been increasing on average per year about 10 percent since 1971 so now i, I mean when the the gold price standard actually collapsed so if you're looking at a 10% increase from, I mean, for the past 50 years to now, so it actually tells you that the gold is actually the best, one of the best performing asset class. In fact, if you compare it to, to equities and, and, and the fixed income in the same period, gold has actually performed comparable to equities and has actually performed better than fixed income. If you're looking at the past 20 years, it actually has actually performed for most of the asset class. And how investors in Kenya can actually access to that kind of a, a, a product is only through new gold. So new gold give investors an exposure into gold. So that's basically how you can use it. You can actually have it as part of the, the portfolio that can help you with a long-term sustainable return. But over and above that, it is basically the best or the effective diversifier in your portfolio. You need to have insurance. If you've got asset that you want, you want to take care of it, you want to make sure it doesn't disappear because of COVID, you want to ensure it. So investors must somehow, I would say, uh, investors must consider actually having gold as part uh, of, the, of the portfolio using the ETF. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. I'll move over to the other panelists, but I'll come back to you. I like what you're reminding us that since we departed from gold being the main standard, we have been seeing at least a 10% return. So the price keeps going up, keeps going up and up. I I think I'm already seeing questions as to whether the price can ever come down. I will come back to you. Allow me to introduce our next panelist, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, who is the Chief Executive of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Our question to you this day, Mr. Odundo, is now we have talked about gold, we have understood what it looks like from a global perspective, we are getting an overview in terms of what the new gold ETF looks like from the proponents of this particular product. Now, you have been at the helm of the NSC, and was uh, you were there in terms of overseeing the ETF as well as the derivatives. What is your take from sitting at the at the helm of the NSC, being um, your contribution, being providing the trading platform and creating access to these opportunities? When you look at gold, when you look at ETF, when you look at where you sit at, what do you have to say as we start off this conversation? Okay. 
Okay. I think we have a bit of a we have a bit of an issue. Joffrey, I will come back to you. Let me move over to Nahashan Mungai, who is the Executive Director at Standard Investment Bank. Very welcome to you, Nahashan. I speak to you as an investor in this particular asset. Perhaps you can walk us through what are your views when you look at gold and what triggered you to actually invest in gold, especially the gold ETF that is listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. A very warm welcome to you, Nahashan, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Vive, for having me. And um, I mean, it's really exciting to have this conversation and um, and to talk about why we should invest in gold as, as fund managers. I think um, in April, when we <clears throat> when we thought about getting into uh, a position in gold, uh, the biggest uh, the biggest reason why we made that decision was really just a risk management uh, uh, decision uh, because. Uh, we manage our investors' funds in uh, in very many financial instruments. So for us, it was very important to ask ourselves, as we move into an uncertain period um, where you have uh, trade tensions between the US and China, which at the time was a very big deal in April, um, you have issues around uh, COVID, and this is expected to be with us for a while. We had to ask ourselves, how do we hedge our investors against, uh, against these this concerns? And um, our fund is able to go short uh, markets, so we can still hedge ourselves against falling markets uh, by going short um, the various financial instruments that we trade. But one of the obvious choices when you're going through a crisis and, and when you're going through a difficult period is actually just to buy gold. And, and not just gold, any type of precious metal, but gold happens to uh, outperform over time. So that was really the decision that we, and that was really the the thinking behind going into the gold ETF. And I think Mansa X was really the first uh, fund manager in Kenya to invest in the gold ETF. And, and I'm happy to see now that there's a lot more interest and a lot more uh, local investors are, are actually trying to go into this product. So there's somebody who asked whether the, the, the horse has already bolted, whether we have missed the bus. So as, um, I mean, I agree with uh, one of the first speakers that said, it's very hard to, it's very hard to, um, to tell whether uh, an asset of this nature, especially given the unique circumstances that we find ourselves in, is actually trading at the top. Uh, what you want to do is um, look at the historical pattern of such an asset class, uh, similar to what uh, Michael was alluding to. So it's very important to remember that gold is a non-yielding asset. And, and that means it's a very unique uh, asset to hold in that a gold bullion that you buy today at say $2,000 an ounce still remains a gold bullion worth $2,000 an ounce. You know, the physical, the physical uh, asset doesn't actually really change. So what will increase its value is investors feeling that other asset classes will continue to yield lower than um, the capital gains that you get from holding this asset. So uh, with central banks pumping liquidity into markets, then you expect that uh, it became it becomes more sensible therefore now to hold gold, whether it's an unyielding asset or not. Now it becomes sensible to hold it. And we expect the central banks will continue to prop up economies for the next uh, foreseeable future. So we expect that gold will continue to be uh, an outperforming uh, an asset. And, and there was also another question someone asked about whether the stock market is now running and it seems to be correcting and therefore is gold therefore going to start losing value uh, exactly. our opinion is the stock market right now is outperforming because of the liquidity support that the central bankers are giving to uh, the the stock market so if you look at the underlying fundamentals of most companies that are listed say on the s p 500 most companies are not doing very well uh, in fact they're having the worst um, the worst performance they've had in years. And, and based on this, you then ask yourself, so why is the stock market running? So the stock market is running because of extra liquidity that's coming from the Federal Reserve and several central banks just pumping and, and printing money. So based on this, we expect that gold will continue to perform. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Let me follow up with a question. So you decided to uh, invest in the new gold ETF. 
in the Kenyan market, yet you had different yes. opportunities, whether to invest in the physical physical gold or to go overseas and, and buy um, different ETFs. And especially because you have a lot of uh, liquidity and visibility of the market, you're not only trading yeah. here. Perhaps you can tell yes. us, why did you choose the Kenyan gold ETF as a product start from your standpoint as an investor? And also secondly, when you say you can take a short position, are you short on gold or are you long on gold? If that's a question that you can't un answer if uh, without um, bridging on your proprietary rights as far as Mansa X is concerned. Over to you, Nahashi. Okay. Um, so why did we decide to go for the new Kenya Gold ETF, uh, whereas we have so many other liquidity providers that we use? Uh, I'd say because it's a very well-structured product. And it surprises us that we were, you know, a lot of people had not seen how well-structured it is. Um, I think Michael alluded to this. What you have, uh, the new gold ETF on the Nairobi Stock Exchange actually represents real actual gold bullion uh, stored in London warehouses. So that's quite unique. And um, additionally, we felt that it's our responsibility as a fund that's domiciled in Kenya, regulated in Kenya, and that has Kenyan investors to also push liquidity into the alternative asset classes that are available on the stock market. And that was also one of the reasons uh, that drove us into investing in the uh, new Kenya uh, gold ETF. Then in terms of whether we are long gold uh, or short gold, um, I'd answer that question by first stating that Mansa X uh, will trade uh, long or short different asset classes with different channels that we're looking at. So long term, we have always held a view, and, and this is something we have been very clear about from the beginning, that we've always been uh, bullish on gold. And this is from our inception back in 2018. We we started calling for higher gold prices back when it was trading at about $1,250 an ounce. And that's a long-term view that we've always held. However, in the in the short to medium yeah, term, sometimes we find ourselves short gold. So that, has, oh. that also happens as part of our portfolio uh, management. But overall, we remain bullish on gold prices. Okay, thank you very much for that. I hear you as an investor, you say this was convenient for you, it made perfect sense, and the underlying security in terms of the gold ETF being the gold bullion actually gave you a, a huge sense of comfort. So I really like that, and I, I like hearing the voice of the investor. Now let's come back to Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, who is the Chief Executive of the Arabic Security Exchange. Just... Joffrey, can you hear me? Joffrey, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear you now, Bitty. Okay? Oh, fantastic. I can hear you loud and clear. Joffrey, you are uh, you're responsible for the trading platform and really the distribution of these asset classes. Before I get into the questions that we want to ask in re reference to the ETF, maybe you can give us an overview of what you're seeing on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. What's the, uh, happening to the other stocks and is there any difference? in terms of what is happening to the gold ETF. A very warm welcome to you and over to you. Oh, thank you, Bidhe. So um, I think that's a very good question, given that uh, it provides a good context of how we've been seeing the gold ETF perform. Uh, what we're witnessing currently in the market is that there is that as a price trending down of uh, stocks across the market. We've seen uh, the most markets globally and even in the African markets is about 20% and above in terms of their, their price valuations. Uh, that notwithstanding, we're seeing volumes increasing. We're seeing a lot of local investors coming through, uh, responding to the opportunities that are being provided by the stock market. And so with the yields also dropping on the, on the fixed income side, so the, bond, the stock market is presenting a great opportunity to invest. But um, I'm so delighted to be in this webinar today because um, one year back, when we were, uh, or four, year, four years back, when we were looking at the gold ETF, uh, our prediction is that this product will one day um, be a very successful asset class and really provide a hedge for investors. And that's a message that we went out to the market, talking to fund managers, investors, and and. And, and I'm, I'm so delighted that uh, it's come to pass, unfortunately, not in these circumstances. This is not what we wanted, uh, but it just proves the point that uh, gold is really uh, a volatility beater, and you can see how it has performed. 
Um, the other thing is that what attracted us to this opportunity, it was in line with our strategic plan uh, that, was, that was positioned towards uh, deepening the market and broadening the breadth of the market. And we were able to come up with regulation through a policy guidance note as opposed to actually having an, an act in parliament to allow the entry of this product. And um, when we came to the market, we were also happy that we were coming in with an issuer because it's one thing to set up the market and the rules and regulations and then not have anybody come to the market. And we were so delighted that APSA, who were backless then, were bold enough to say that we are ready, we're good to go with this, and we're very confident that this, this product will work. And they also came in as market makers. And so as um, Nash and Asso talked about, the structure, the regulation and the framework that we put in place was really ideal for the success of this product. And I think the only challenge was the knowledge gap and the, the sort of appreciation for gold. And so when you look at the why this product has been very attractive in our view is that it provides a very um, uh, good um, option for diversification. Uh, it's professionally managed. I think AFSA has done a great job providing us with um, information on the performance of this product, the annual accounts, etc. cetera. Uh, if you look at the price, um, Either today, if you want to own gold, direct physical gold, I think it's okay. Probably not, it's out of my reach. I don't know whether it's out of yours. Uh, but having an ETF has provided that ability for people to own gold. Let me give you an example. We we did um, a sale in one of our coastal towns that has um, a, a population of Indians and, and and people appreciate gold as an asset. And the the excitement when they could learn that they could actually buy gold for 1,250 uh, shillings an ounce was was pretty unbelievable. And so it just tells you it's, it's really an appreciation and the fact that you tell them that there is actually gold in a vault. So the simplicity of the messaging uh, is something that we, we try to bring out, uh, but the, the traction that never built. And I'm, I'm so happy that in the last one year, uh, we've seen a good, good performance and even have a local investor through Mansa. And, and, and this is just a demonstration that um, uh, we, are, we, are in, we are now really positioned for even better better gains. Now, let me speak okay. to how I see this going forward. I want to speak to, especially to the institutional investors, local institutional investors. Uh, this is an important asset class in order to protect your portfolio. I think the message has come out loud and clear. Uh, we have no certainty of when the COVID crisis will end. I know people are talking about whether the, the, the ship has docked. I want to say, but when one bus comes, the next one is coming. So do not uh, lose the opportunity of taking a position now. Uh, this is a great opportunity, and uh, we'll probably see uh, even better uh, returns going forward. Okay. I think one final question for you before then I can open up the question and answer segment. Briefly, uh, Mr. Dundo, just give us this sense. You are saying that this is part of a plan for the NSC in terms of enhancing depth of the market as well as availability of products. Now, I throw it back to you and say, when the retail investors look at this, um, look at the NSC, we have seen a slew of a bit of negative news coming in, in, in terms of companies delisting, investors losing money, investors having invested here and losing money, some of them even closing down. When you look at the gold ETF, how should an investor perceive the gold ETF vis-a-vis -vis other stocks? Does it move in tandem with the other stocks in terms of how the economy operates, or does it have separate dynamics just to be able to give an understanding and an overview to the investors who are watching this? Um, I think uh, to your point about uh, the listing and the listings, I think this is a normal market functionality. So you get times when companies will perform well and they're able to survive, and then there are certain times that the listing would happen. And sometimes the listings happen because of good reasons, strategic exits, uh, and things like that. So there are very many circumstances. Back to a question about how does this position itself vis-a-vis -vis other stocks in the market. Now, let me let me just lay a perspective here. Um, the underlying asset of this ETF is actually gold held in a bullion, in, in, in a vault. Uh, if you invest in a company today, your, your, your real asset is really the performance of that company and the, the ability of that company to continue that ongoing concern. So in event of a liquidation, uh, chances are that um, you 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 stand to to gain more by sitting in a gold in a in a gold ETF because the underlying asset is sitting somewhere and the value is actually there as opposed to for instance if there's a delisting and then you become the residual beneficiary after all uh, creditors have been paid off so there's sort of a 
a greater benefit in having an investment in physical assets like gold. I think looking at the historical performance of gold over the years, it has proved to be a very stable asset. It has lower volatility. Um, it, it tends to um, operate um, in, a, in, a, in a different direction from how the economies operate. For instance, when economies are going through stress as we are right now, the value of gold is going up. So if you have an exposure in gold, the benefit, it's a benefit. So it sort of operates in a different direction. And that, that I think, is really the, the, the selling point of, uh, okay. of, of buying into a gold ETF. All right. Thank you very much for that, that overview. So we are hearing that the value drivers for gold are extrinsic to the economy, whereas you have other listed entities are focused on the how the local economy is working for gold. It's affiliated to the global gold price. And if the global glo uh, global gold price is still on an upsurge, then you suddenly have a bit of an uptick in, in as far as the price for gold is concerned. We are getting into the question and answer session. If you haven't already put up your question and answers, I would kindly advise you to go to the bottom of your screen, um, click there, put up your question. We will endeavor to answer this. I will drive um, go for another about eight or so minutes just getting into a question and answer segment. If you have any questions that are specific to trading the gold ETF, Hold your horses. At least that horse has not already left um, the yard. We'll be coming to speak to the local traders here who will tell us how do you price this, how do you invest in this, and what are the opportunities available for you locally. I'll start off with questions that have been uh, directed to Michael. Michael, the first question is, since the ETF is South African, are those who invest in it exposed to the volatility in the RAND or the volatility in the US dollar? And this question comes from Rena Hicks. Over to you, Michael. Uh, thanks for the question. It's quite a good question, yeah. So the underlying asset called gold obviously is actually priced in dollar, right? But the products in, in South Africa is trading in, in a local currency, which is the, the South African rand. I think same thing as what you see in Kenya. So if you are investing in gold, you actually exposure, I mean, you, an exposure into basically having an asset that does not only give you commodities, but also give you an, an FX hedge. Like for instance, in South Africa, basically we actually, you can use new gold to, uh, to, to hedge the devaluation of South African rand versus the US dollar because of what the underlying asset is US dollar. So same as when you're investing in Kenya. So when you buy new gold, it's actually a, a, a trading in the local currency, but then you actually have a, a, a local currency hedge. In other words, if, if the Kenyan shilling is devaluing against dollar, then by having gold, new gold in your portfolio, you're not only having it exposed to commodities, but you'll also be able to hedge in your, your FX devaluation against US dollar. Same thing as an essay. Okay. Thank you very much for that. We have another question from Daniel Areba. Daniel is asking, is it advisable for role list? I beg your pardon. Is it advisable for low risk appetite investors to venture into the gold ETF? Is it a preserve of investors with high risk appetite only? And how effective is ETF as an investment strategy for capital preservation? Over to you, Michael. Very good question. So basically, uh, the gold as an asset class is normally invested or used by strategic investors like mostly pension fund who are tend to be long term investors whose main objective is to get the long term uh, I mean, uh, uh, return, right? But over and above that, they also want to hedge the downside. In other words, they use the product to get the, the long-term return, but also to manage the risk, as uh, um, Mungai was also saying. So an investor, obviously, who's a risk averse, is actually, I think, uh, an investor who can actually invest in gold. Because one, you want to actually invest in asset, give you a sustainable long-term return, but at the same time, is able to, to provide, to protect your downside in case there are issues like uh, a financial crisis, uh, as we thought COVID right now. So. It's not really in a product for investors who are speculating who want to get exorbitant return but not managing the risk so if you're investing in gold you are like a steady investor who want to see a very slow nice uh, uh performance over a period of time but at the same time while you actually um, i mean uh, putting your downside because gold actually acts, acts as an insurance so by having it in your portfolio you're actually insuring yourself against the downside so it is basically a good investment product for investors like that all right, so it should be long-term focus, and really what you're doing is hedging against a market fall. A final question for yeah. you, and then I move over to Nahashan. This question comes from Tivinda Jutla. Tivinda says that Russia has today announced that they have a vaccine for COVID-19. 
as a consequence, there has been a, uh, a pullback in as far as the gold price to date has fallen following this announcement. India will be announcing their vaccine on 5th of August. I think he meant maybe later on in the month. In his opinion, he thinks that the gold price will drop, but he wants to hear what your opinion is in as far as trading on uncertainty and if we're getting closer. Yeah. What does this mean for the investment? Over to you, Michael. Okay, I, I think it's actually quite important for investors to understand that gold is not only used as a diversifier, as a risk management tool, but it's also an investment class that gives you a long-term uh, return. So it's, it, it, it gives you those kind of perspective. So, yes, I mean, if you're looking at the history for the past uh, I mean, five, uh, 50 years, gold obviously moved up and down, but if you're looking at over the period, it's always been going up. Yes, maybe if they announce that the vaccine is actually found, the price will obviously be impacted. Of course, I'm not sure by how much, but over the long term, the price will also will come back and actually uh, give you a, a positive return. Okay. So, Michael, is this a short-term bleep, or do we expect this downturn to continue from where you start? The downturn for... If, if, if. Just the, the price correction that we have seen today, is this temporary yeah, yeah. or do we just keep looking at the triggers to see what direction the gold price will take? Yeah, in fact, if you're looking at the what you've seen in, in, on equities, it's not the first time that you've seen uh, the, the equities market actually running or doing well. I mean, in, in the past two months, we've seen that happening over time. But again, I mean, the, the rally of the market is, as my colleague was actually saying, that it's actually really influenced by a lot of cash available and investors are, obviously cannot invest all their money into gold, but they can invest some of it into equities since they can't go into bonds, what's called bonds are giving them negative yields. So I'm sure, so it basically is, I think, given there's a lot of uncertainty happening around, I think this is actually a blip. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll move over to Nahashan. And this question is from Aju Shah. And he says, um, no, I beg your pardon, it's from Joseph Kahinda who says, Nahashan, Given the break over the 2000 levels and the new highs set over the last two weeks, here 2075, how do you then set the target TP slash SI levels with no previous technical levels to use as a reference? Joseph continues to ask, do you just trail the stop to wherever this will get or do you use some form of projections based on your own method, it psychological or Fibonacci or any other tool. I guess he's trying to get a sense of what is the price outlook and what methodology or what tools can he be able to define a top, a ceiling and a bottom for this particular trend. All right, so <clears throat> when it comes to how you take a position in gold, uh, I just want to be very clear. You have to, you have to think of this as a very long term play. So, um, we advise that it should form about five to 10% of your portfolio. And if it's about five to 10% of your portfolio, then you don't really want to play very short term. So um, I get the sense that, you know, I, I, I get the sense that he's trying to understand how far back the price of gold can pull back. Uh, so is everyone hearing me? Yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay, I was frozen a bit over here. Yeah, so, so back to the original point around, we feel that uncertainty will continue. We feel that interest rates are going to remain low. We feel that there's going to be a lot of liquidity globally for, um, for, the, for, the, for the foreseeable future. So what kind of targets are we looking at? We are actually targeting $3,000 an ounce. That's our, that's our initial target. So yes, we might okay. see a pullback. Um, and we don't we, we we don't we don't really want to get into talking about how we use technicals like you mentioned your Fibonacci lines and probably your RSIs. We don't really want to get into the technical bits because then that is usually for much more short-term trading. What we like to do here at Mansa when we are looking at this gold investment is that it's something that we constantly hold in our portfolio and actually keep um, increasing or adjusting it to to um, to align with the growth of the of the fund. So. We're not very sure about it, and we actually think that we could go as high as three thousand dollars an ounce. Okay, so three thousand dollars an ounce is the ceiling that we are looking out for. Mr. Joffrey, I come to you with a question from Bajusha, and he says this one is for Mr. Joffrey Odundo. 
do you feel that the minimum quantity to buy gold, which is 100, and if you multiply that by the price, which gives you a minimum ticket size of 210,000, do you feel that this entry level is relatively high for the retail investors? If this minimum quanti quantity can be dropped to one unit, this is what Bajisha is proposing, do you think liquidity will increase and then you avoid crowding out most of the retail investors? Mr. Odundo, is there a level that this price can come off or is there a minimum number that can be revised downwards to address liquidity? Over to you, Mr. Odundo. Uh, well, the minimum that is set of 100, that's really um, <clears throat> a limit to set up in the rules and that's actually the minimum quantity of any unit of any st uh, stock that can trade on the NSC. And that's a similar uh, scenario we had to use. And ideally, the, the, the profile of investors we see at the exchange are ideally not very low value investors. Apparently, the median of our investment, uh, retail investment pool is something in the region of about 500,000. So we, we feel that it's a fair, a fair level to bring them at. Uh, of course, these are, are considerations we can take in the future, depending on on the kind of uh, liquidity we see coming through. But we, we looked at this also against um, uh, what we saw in our unit trust and other funds. So there's a very uh, clear process and science around it. So we've taken that in consideration, but the future will, will really be dependent on how we see the trading volumes happen. Okay, thank you very much for that. I'll now be taking just brief closing remarks from our panelists, if you can make them as brief as, as 30 seconds. I truly wish we had more time. That would probably be something to be considered later on. I'll come and take the closing remarks from in the order in terms of I'll start with Michael, then I'll go to Nahashan, and I'll go to Joffrey. I know we haven't been able to answer the questions, and I, I am going to endeavor to just work with the upset team just to make sure that these answers are available to you if you are streaming online or if you were part of this webinar. As we take the closing remarks, there's one pertinent question that we didn't answer. Perhaps you can give us guidance on this. Who is this gold ETF for in terms of how do you think about portfolio allocation? And then we can take your closing remarks from where you stand. I'll start off with Mr. Michael Mugwaba. Over to you. Yeah, so in my closing remarks, I would actually like to uh, take this opportun opportunity to talk to investors again, as I've done the roadshow before, talking about them investing in gold. At the time, the price was not as good as we obviously see right now. So I'm saying, I think it's important that uh, in managing their portfolio, they must actually consider uh, to have gold as part of the portfolio. And uh, in terms of uh, how much they can put in, I mean, it depends on the level of risk that the portfolio uh, they're managing is actually having. So the higher the risk, I mean, I think much more gold we can actually allocate. But generally, I mean, studies have shown that at least a well-diversified portfolio must have at least a, must have at least between uh, two and and ten percent of gold in it. So make sure that you not that you actually covering. Uh, in situations like this whereby you've got COVID and, and stuff like that. So I will actually recommend them to say they must look deep into their portfolio and not just on focusing purely on return, but they must also look at how they're going to manage the risk in case something like this happen. So you must have, you must consider having gold as part of your portfolio. Okay, thank you very much for that. You must consider having gold as an existing portfolio. Nahashan, over to you in terms of your closing remarks and any commentary if investors are thinking about portfolio allocation in as far as gold is concerned. Over to you, Nahashan. Well, um, my closing remarks would be, first of all, on Mansa X, we've already done Okay, so we've already diversified and, and factored in uh, gold within our portfolio. So my closing remarks would be, if you are investing out there and you're trying to look for a fund manager, uh, please look and consider fund managers like Mansa X, who are constantly looking to invest in new products like the new gold ETF and will continue to do this over time because we believe it adds value, not only in terms of increasing the returns that we give our investors, but also protecting against the downside risks uh, that we've seen in the, in the local stock market. And then in terms right. of... Sorry, just, just, and then in terms of the, the portfolio allocation, um, we recommend between five to 10%, uh, depending on your risk appetite, because again, gold remains um, a very volatile asset as well. All right, thank you very much. That is Nahashan Mungai. He is an executive director at Standard Investment Bank, and you know him for the Mansa X product. He's telling you, if you are looking for a fund 
fund manager, he's certainly up there in terms of consideration. And if you are looking at doing gold at, at an individual level, then let it be five to 10% of your portfolio. I now um, invite Mr. Geoffrey Odindo, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Kindly give us your closing remarks and maybe any direct um, uh, communication just to the investors in terms of the safety of this product. Where is the asset held? What depend, what, how, do, how do their holdings look like from a sense of the CDSC and the regulatory oversight as you give us your closing remarks? A very warm welcome and over to you, Mr. Odindo. Okay, thank you. Um, I need to say that um, when it comes to allocation of this asset class, I think it uh, is very important for long-term funds uh, to participate in it. Uh, we have got pension funds, uh, insurance funds, and also collective investment schemes. I think it's important for you to uh, have an exposure to gold because it actually provides you with uh, some level of protection and also over the long term, uh, uh, good appreciation of value. So as Nahashan has said, Michael, I think I really recommend this for that class. Also for the retail, I think today Kenya has a very um, deep pool of collective investment schemes, I think in, in excess of 80, uh, 60 to 70 billion shillings. So you already understand how ETF, how collective investment schemes work. ETF have a similar mechanic, and I think there's no real difference uh, other than the fact that this is a listed security. So getting an exposure, you're not getting into something new, something quite similar. So I'd recommend also uh, for you to participate uh, and get into funds like Mansa X and get some exposure uh, on the retail side. I think my message to, to investors out there is that the NSC has actually deepened and broadened the market. We have given you all asset classes available. This is one attractive one. And let's not lose the benefit of hindsight. We came from 1,250. We are now at 2,000. We don't want to be talking a month, a month from today and it's at 3,000. And Nashon has already given you a prediction. Then you said, I wish I knew. So we have the benefit of hindsight. I think God gave us that benefit. Let's let's learn from that and let's take opportunity and get exposure to this. You never know when the next black swan or event is gonna happen. You could say COVID will come and go. What next? I mean, this this is a very big surprise, and another could present itself. And so let's ensure our portfolios, let's insulate them using products such as this. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So we are coming to the tail end of this webinar. We started off with an overview of what is happening to globally, and we had a commodity that took us through that. That was Byron Woods. Now we've talked to um, a panel of experts. We've talked to um, the CEO of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. We've talked to an investor that is Mansa X that is headed by Nahash and Mungai. We've also talked to the issuer, that is Michael Mugwab. So we have an overview in terms of what is the fundamental of this particular product, as well as what is their investment case. And if you are still with us, I think the thing is, this is really a wake up call. Look at the information that we are discussing about, do your research. Then after you do your research, if you get to the point where you want to invest in this particular asset, how do you go about it? Next, for this uh, final part of this webinar, I invite Mr. Titonamu is a senior trader at Absa Securities to take us through the intricacies of executing a trade on the new gold ETF. Over to you, Mr. Tam. Okay, thank you very much, um, Bidhe. Um, I'm sure you can hear me, right? Yeah, well, um, uh, I guess uh, I'll begin with a very short uh, history background of uh, the ETF. Uh, the ETF was listed back in um, March 2017 at a, a listing price of uh, 1,250 shillings uh, per share. Um, it can be found on the NSC under the ticker GLD. Um, and uh, I guess the key difference uh, between this equity and other equities is the uh, market making factor. And so as a market maker, we are tasked with uh, providing a two-way quote on, um, on, on the price of gold on a, through every session. Uh, this means that we'll give you a buying price and a selling price on any day. Um, um, this, this makes us the, the buyer or seller of last resort uh, or, or, and, and pretty much a liquidity provider in the market. Um, uh, the, the pricing around the, the, the ETF might be the next thing I'll go into, and uh, how we how we come up to um, come up with the price on a daily basis is um, we take the USD spot uh, dollar price of gold. So that's the spot price of gold in the US uh, markets, and then uh, we multiply that by the Kenya USD pair. Um, so the spot 
uh, price of uh, the dollar in Kenya on the day or at the moment, and multiply that again by uh, 100 for you to uh, achieve the price of 100 shares, which is also equivalent to one ounce of gold. Um, that the entire fund uh, has an allocation of fee of 0.3%, uh, but this is a, an annualized factor. Um, uh, so um, uh, you, you, you really do not get to feel the impact of this uh, uh, discount factor. See, I, I, I call it a discount factor for that matter. Now, uh, going, going into how to purchase the, the ETF. Well, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, all you have to do is call your broker. Your broker shall then uh, get in touch with uh, the, the APSA New Gold Desk, which is uh, represented by APSA Securities here in Kenya. Um, uh, once that phone call is made, we shall give you, like I mentioned, the spot price uh, of, of, of gold. And uh, if agreeable on that price, then um, it's up to you to uh, set the quantity that you'd like to execute and uh, we'll provide the shares for you to buy. Uh, the same goes for when you want to sell. Uh, we would be there, we would stand in place to, to, to give you a price of the, the ETF on the day um, that we would be able to, to, to buy back. Uh, I guess uh, one more thing to mention uh, would be uh, the, 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 the performance year, year to date. Uh, we've, we've, we've seen about a 31.12% uh, performance year to date. Over the last three years since listing, uh, we've had about a 41% um, um, uh, um, improvement in, sh in share price since listing from, 20, from 1250 to 2100 or 2050 as it was just um, um, at the close of the market today. Um, uh, I guess uh, that's pretty much it from me, unless um, there's anything else uh, back to you, Mbid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for having been with us for the last one and a half hours. I will be taking the final questions in as far as the gold ETF is concerned, and then we will be closing in about five minutes. <laughs> a quick question for you, Tito. How do you go about investing in this? Do you invest in local shillings or are you coming to the NSC and look coming with hard currency, in other words, dollars? So, no, uh, um, as it's listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, uh, then you'd be transacting in Kenya shillings. The USD KES uh, factor is just um, due to the fact that we have to convert the dollar price of the metal uh, before availing it over to, to the investors here in Kenya. Okay. So no, the, the short answer is uh, you, you trade in Kenya shillings like any other stock. All right. And then we have one other question from Justice Agoti, and he's asking, what efforts are there to create more awareness, especially given the fact that you are a market maker? And I think there's also another quick question on being a market maker. How can you um, look at demand and supply? Are you able to fit demand as it comes through as well as to be able to take on supply when it comes onto the market? Over to you, Tito. Um, yeah, well, as as uh, let, let me start with your second question. Um, I'll need you to repeat this, the, the the first one as uh, as well. I, I I missed a bit of that. Okay. So, in terms of demand and supply, um, when we listed the the, the 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 new gold ETF back in 2017, we listed about 400,000 units. Um, since then, I believe at the end of 2018, we reduced this holding to about 150,000 units. This was just uh, to um, uh, mitigate the, 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 the costs arising from uh, the custodial holding, etc. Um, since uh, the beginning of the, the listing, we, we, well, the first three years was um, a very slow period. We, we only managed to sell 8,000 units. However, this year we've sold more than 75% of the entire listing. Uh, but this should not give any investor uh, any jitters around whether or not you'll be able to, to get the shares if you require them. Um, we, we, we do have an arrangement with the CDSC here in Kenya, and it'll take three to five days for us to credit the, the, um, the ETF with more securities uh, on and as is needed. What was your, your first question, Mbita? retail investors and secondly what are the affiliated costs and all taxes in terms of trading the gold etf locally over to you tito okay uh well 
I'd say that the, the ETF as it's currently structured might might be out of reach for, for most retail investors. I mean, being that uh, you must purchase a minimum of 100 shares, which is equivalent to one ounce. Uh, and in lots, consecutive lots of 100 uh, uh, thereafter. Um, in terms of costs, uh, just the, 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 the normal statutory fees applies. That's your, your CMA levies, your, your NSC levies, your stamp duty, etc. Uh, and whatever your local charge. So I believe it's a sliding scale in terms of um, uh, what what uh, brokers different brokers charge, uh, but I believe it's anywhere between 0.75 percent to 2 percent for for retail investors. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That is all the time that we had, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> we are coming to the tail end of this conversation. I'll hand it over briefly to Tito to just give us a brief, uh, a brief vote of thanks from the APSA team. And then I will also close that and bring this room to order and then we can exit. So bear with us for the next two to three minutes. I'd continue to encourage you, put up your questions up there because we have your details and I am sure that we'll find a way to be able to continue asking your questions and to answer your questions. If nothing else, to be able to give you all the information that you need to be able to consider and make an investment in the new Called ETF, which is the hashtag VLD. Over to you, Tito, for the closing remarks as well as a vote of thanks from the APSA team. Tito. Yeah, well, uh, so, so be there. Um, like I said, uh, we, we've been drumming this drum around uh, the new gold ETF over the last three years, and uh, uptake has been uh, pretty slow. However, I can tell you that, uh, as Nahash and Alion mentioned, it's, it's, it's more of a long term investment and one that is. Um, that comes to play during times of volatility as we are experiencing right now. So I'd, I'd urge the, the local um, um, investment community to uh, seriously consider this asset class uh, in your portfolios uh, as a hedge and obviously for capital gains. Like I said, year to date, we made already 30% 30, 30 plus uh, on the ETF. Um, outside that, I mean, I'd, I'd just like to give a warm thanks from um, the ABSA team, uh, the ABSA family here, uh, and, and, uh, say, say a big thank you to the panelists and the attendees. Uh, remember here at ABSA, we're passionate about what we do. Uh, we're, we're bold enough to bring in new products such as this in a market that uh, has never seen such products. And uh, we're, we're ready to serve you. So um, feel free to get in touch with the, the ABSA Securities Desk. Um, uh, I believe contacts shall be linked to this um, uh, webinar, although just uh, very briefly, our, our uh, direct lines are uh, 020-425-4597 or 598. Okay, so this is the tail end of this conversation. Thank you for being with us and also for engaging. But what I like what about what we've had is we are in Africa. Tito has talked about drums. We like to beat drums when we are telling story. Today, we have told you the story of the new gold ETF. We have started by telling you its linkages to the gold price at a global level and told you that it's an, on an upward trajectory so that you can be con start considering this as an investment. We went ahead and told you through the panel that yes, look at it, invest at least 200,000, but let it not be your initial investment. It can be anything between two to 10% of your existing portfolio. Then we came back and told you that you can actually do this right here at home. Yes, through the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And what you are looking for is the ticker GLD. And this is not some of those out there things that we see, the products that we see out there. No, it is GLD for gold, for new gold. So what we are saying is there's this opportunity, there's uncertainty in the market. Rather than sitting there and whiling away and wondering what is happening in as far as COVID is concerned, here is a vibrant and open opportunity that is available to each and every one of you in terms of investing in gold, directly here at home in Kenya through the new gold ETF. So I beat the drums. I wish I had the drums. I don't have, but I can see them beating in my mind. And I can see this story that is being told. And the question to you is, when this narrative is repeated in a decade, what will be your contribution to this story? 
we are looking at gold and we are certainly very grateful for your time to you as the audience thank you so much for making the time spread the word spread what we have heard here i hope you've been able to take notes for our panelists, a special thank you to the APSA and the Nairobi Securities Exchange team that were able to allow us to have this joint webinar on investing in gold and using gold as a hedge during these uncertain times. A very warm thank you as well to Mr. Anthony Kirui, who set the stage for this conversation. Another thank you and an applause of appreciation to Mr. Byron Woods, who was able to share his experience as a commodities trader spanning 19 years, telling us that this is a wake-up call. To our panelists, Mr. Michael Mugwaba, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, Mr. Nahashan Mungai, thank you so much for sharing your experiences in this asset and for giving us a glimpse in terms of what to look out for for the way forward. Thank you also to Tito for giving us an overview in terms of how do we get through to this particular asset class. A lot of work was also done by the APSA team here and the communications and marketing team in the background, just for enabling us to have the opportunity to leverage on technology to tap into this particular conversation. So to everybody, thank you very much. I will leave you with a question again. As we beat the drums telling the African story, looking at gold in 10 years from now, what will your contribution be? At least I know what I am looking at. I will have a contribution and it will be tagged to the hashtag GLD. That is the new gold investment. Look at the information we have shared today. Go online, get more information, ask yourself as many questions as you possibly can, and certainly consider this. And if nothing else, let it be the welcome call for you. Thank you for, you att for your attendance. My name is Bitha Mwema. It was a pleasure. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Bitha. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Thank you, Tito. Well done. Turn it off. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. I don't know if you can hear me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, I can hear. I can hear you. So yeah. Shall I come there and help you with some?